Yeah, I guess one of the biggest things in how we're different, I mean, there's still that newsroom hierarchy. As you see, we have an editor, um, an online content director, a print content director, mm -hmm. um, and a series of copy editors that read copy before it goes on our website. Um, so I still submit my copy to an editor who reads it, proofreads it, posts it on the website, but there's more of an immediacy with the way we do things now. Is, whereas before, you know, I would cover a government board meeting that took place at 1 p.m. in the afternoon and write it by 5 p.m. before the day's over, knowing that it's going to go in the next morning's paper. Whereas today, I'm, you know, I've got an air card on my MacBook and I'm, I'm writing pre-writing a lot of the facts that I know are going to come out and uh, basically giving the stories some live color and emailing it or posting it straight from the meeting and sending my editor a text saying, hey, we've got live coverage of what was just voted on five minutes ago. And um, so that's probably the biggest difference. So you are, you are posting it direct? If, if I'm in a meeting, um, that's the only time that I'm posting directly, but, okay. but I'm texting my editor or emailing my editor say, hey, I just posted this breaking news, um, take a look at it, and she'll look at it right then and, mm -hmm. and proofread it. And, um, you know, at the same time, readers are looking at it. Theoretically, uh, five or six people could have already seen it by the time she gets her eyes on uh -huh. it, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And what exactly is your beat? Is it City Hall? Um, I'm the government reporter, government um, reporter. all government. Um, so first and foremost, City Hall, Ann Arbor City Council. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably, I'd say, close to 75% of my duties at this point. Um, Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners, second to that. And then um, local state rep races that are heating up right now. Um, that's kind of um, going to be my first introduction into stepping outside of uh, city and county politics as a reporter, um, you know, at this paper. Mm -hmm. okay. And I hesitate to use the word paper. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, uh, I see there is a paper there, so. We, we still print on Thursdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. It's kind of our foot in the door to maintain that advertising revenue. I think those were, you know, when you looked at the business model, those were the two highest um, you know, ad revenue days, it made sense to, you know, if we're going to have a sustainable business model, keep our foot in the door it, there, and you can talk to people higher up the chain than me on, on what our long-term goals are. You know, I'm not really interested <laughs> in the business model. Yeah. I figure that's for those other people. I'm interested yeah. in reporters. Okay. Um, how you report news, how you gather news. I'm, I'm half surprised, you're looking very dapper here, I'm half surprised to see you in the tie and you got the little... This is not required. This, there is no <laughs> right. dress code at annarbor.com. Uh, my first uh, couple weeks in the summer when I started, when it was nice and hot and it was July, I, I took advantage of that and showed up in jeans and sandals and um, I didn't feel like a reporter, so <laughs> I made myself my own dress code. Yeah, right. I'm not going to show up uh, wearing a you know, an ACDC t-shirt t from the 1980s, uh, you know, to a city council meeting or something like right. that. Um, yeah, I tend to come in around 9.30 each morning, um, and, uh, you know, Monday Mondays are our city council meetings, just about, tw at least twice a month, there are city council meetings at 7 p.m. on Mondays, so, um, you know, I work from home in the afternoon those days, pour over a 100-page agenda, and then you know, go to the meeting, and um, those meetings can last close to midnight, and then I'm, you know, knowing that we have an online audience, I'm, I stay up until uh, the sun comes up sometimes, writing six or seven stories that came out of a city council meeting that, you know, we deemed were, were important, um, rather than wait two days, um, or, or, you know, so there, that's my Monday usually. Uh, we're, we're very... Um, beat-driven reporters, whatever's happening on our beat dictates our schedule, what we do. Um, we keep in contact with our editor a lot of the times through email and texting, uh, uh, digital ways, uh, which kind of, hence the Ann uh, you know, uh, it's, it's less, here's a meeting in the morning, here's what we're going to do, here's what tomorrow's paper is going to be. I mean, we're just all out there working as hard as we can, and, you know, some of us are cranking out, you know, five or six entries or posts or stories, whatever you want to call them, that vary in length um, each day. And What do you call them? Depending on what it is. I mean, sometimes you can tell it's a very traditional story with, you know, uh, a lead in quotes and, and uh, 
background information and it's full-fledged and um, other times it's just hey here's uh, here's something that's floating out there that we know about it it'll be a quick two or three paragraph blog post essentially and some of those can get 50 60 70 comments just on you know four sentences you wrote um, I could definitely see myself having a you know a you know extra extra blurbs in my notes uh, city hall blog of stuff that you know just doesn't make sense to write a whole story on you know just a running ticker of right. what's happening and you write a story I comment on it then what happens um, I'll get an email straight to my inbox that says a new comment has been added to your story and that's after somebody's moderated it um, it hasn't necessarily been moderated at that point we have moderators who are staff that also get those alerts and mm -hmm. they'll be reading them and if it contains something offensive or has a personal attack in it the moderator has the authority to take the comment down okay, and so at which point we'll post on there a comment has been removed because mm -hmm. um, and we'll get we'll sometimes email the person and give them a chance to revise their comment but the comment doesn't go through a moderator first it goes it goes straight to the website and we have moderators live watching that mm -hmm. and I mean if they see it pop up they'll take it down within a minute mm -hmm. um, if it's offensive or, or contains a personal attack uh, mm -hmm. name calling which happens every day uh, with you know a lot of online commenters it, different from the print edition you know they, they can hide behind you know cloaks and, and use uh, you know re, uh, maintain their anonymity um, whereas if you send a letter to the editor in a print edition usually had to put your full name, your address, your telephone number, someone would call and verify that you were the person that wrote that letter to the editor online. It's just a free-for-all and uh, we're, we've pretty aggressively tried to monitor mm -hmm. what those people comment and it has the, uh, it's definitely the ability to um, digress very quickly in terms of the quality of comments. So. And I understand that you guys get to uh, reply to the commenters. If you yeah, um, and we're doing that within the bounds of we're still journalists, uh, you know, maintaining objectivity, you know, you know unbiased, uh, you know, we can't have opinions. Um, so if we can provide something factual that adds to the discussion or, you know, a reader will ask a question, um, you know, in addition to what the information that's already in the story, hey, but what about this? Um, if we know the answer, or, or even if we don't, we'll try to track it down, and we'll usually respond, well, here's what the mayor told us. Mm -hmm. And um, it's definitely a, a step up from, you know, stuff you couldn't do with print journalism unless somebody gave you a phone call, which um, people were more hesitant to do than leave a comment on an online story. I think it's a, it's a you know, bold new frontier. It's, um, it's, it's something that papers have been hesitant about because they you know, don't want their reporters getting into quarrels with readers, and um, I think we're all trusted professionals here. We all have degrees in journalism. Um, I mean, at least us that are covering beats and responding to questions about our beats. Um, and it's we're doing it. We wouldn't say anything that we wouldn't say in a story. A lot of us are working from home. You know, we're, we're out somewhere. Um, we're checking our website. We're checking our email. We're responding to comments. You know. I'll be having a snack before I go to bed, and I'm, you know, responding to comments on my story online, and um, you know that's all part of the job, and it, it's expected uh, in this digital world that we don't just shut down at five o'clock every day. You know, my first couple of weeks on the job, I, um, if you read the comments on, you know, my first couple of stories, everybody said, "Who is this new guy?" They criticized me. Um, There's some pretty nasty comments that. Um, were said about me and uh, questioning my ability as a reporter, um, how good of a journalist I was. And, but at this point, um, I think I quickly, you know, fostered those relationships. You know, went out to lunch with city officials, um, you know, split the tab, no favors. <laughs> um, and, you know, just by showing up to every meeting, my presence there and my reporting has, has uh, you know, gained me some respect. And um, I'd say 100% of the comments I've gotten from um, people inside uh, city political circles have said uh, my reporting uh, at AnnArbor.com is far superior to the previous uh, local political coverage done by the Ann Arbor News.